as some of you may know, I've been making a transition from proprietary software to free and open source software. And uh, for 3D modeling, I used to use Hexagon and Carrera. And today, I'm looking at Blender. And uh, Blender here is a competent 3D modeler. Uh, I'm still learning how to use it and that sort of thing, but I figured I'd uh, go ahead and leave the camera on while I do some meddling about with this thing. We're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. First thing you're greeted with when you open up Blender is this nice little splash screen. It gives you some options. You can recover your last session. Uh, you can also open the last document that you created. I have that open right now here. And then of course there are some links to some other useful information as well. Uh, now notably, um, this does require a somewhat of a steep learning curve. I have some mild exper experience with Blender with, uh, with uh, 3D modeling and that sort of thing. I created some simple objects in my time. I've even done some, uh, some um, detailed objects. I was never really that good at it, but there are lots of great tutorials online, and this is helping me to understand how to do 3D modeling a lot better than I did previously. Okay, so let me just click anywhere outside of the splash screen here, and you will see I have done a 3D model of uh, my coffee mug, and eventually I'm going to be um, UV mapping in my logo on this so that I can later use this for a, a 3D um, for a 3D title animation. My 300th episode will be coming up, and I want to do something that's really cool, so. Um, experimentation is key as I always say in all of my episodes well now that I have a coffee cup made and later I'm going to um, have a graphic put on this cup but the thing is I want to make a model of the penguin with the fly swatter and the butterfly and that's something I'm going to be doing later on but I figured well for a 3D title I'm also going to need some text so let's do some experimenting with text here in uh, this show Oh, right. We've just opened up a new Blender document here. And as you can see, you are presented with three objects on uh, your uh, virtual plane here. Uh, you have a lamp, the cube, and the camera. To select, you right-click on these items. And then, of course, you can also go into... Let me right-click on the cube here. And then you can go into edit mode. And then, of course, uh, you have some options that become available in terms of modifying the sphere. Currently, I have a vertex select, which is these little dots that go around the cube. But you can also select uh, edges or faces, which is kind of cool. All right, well, um, I'm going to do a quick little uh, tweak on the cube, and then we'll go into the text uh, editing, just so you can see uh, some things. Now, you have a number of mesh tools that are available here, and then you have a number of options that are available here. What all of these do, I have no idea. I'm still learning how to do this. But by pressing A on my keyboard here, we are in selection mode, and uh, I can just select a, select one vertex and you will see I can edit that if I want to position it where I want and you know do all kinds of fun things with it or uh, with edges I can just select a single edge and by holding down shift I can select multiple edges once I have four edges selected then I have the actual um, face selected, or I can go into face select mode here, and then any time I click on a face, I can modify that. Pressing E on my keyboard, I have now opened up the extrusion, and then I can start modeling. Let me zoom out a little bit here.
and then um, start building a framework for a uh, design here. Alright, let's uh, select another face and we'll extrude that. Maybe even uh, do another one. I can even scale it if I want to by pressing the S key. Oops, not too much. So basically you get an idea of some different block modeling and that sort of thing that you can do. And using blocks you can um, make low polygon characters and that sort of thing. I'm not going to get into that kind of detail because <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. So let me just go ahead and uh, just get rid of this by pressing X on my keyboard or delete will uh, give you the option to delete and then let's go ahead and have some fun with text okay so we just press add and then text and obviously I don't like where it decided to put that text so we're gonna go ahead and uh, move that to where we want I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and then I'm just dragging these little modifiers here by pressing the 7 key, I get the top view. 1 is the bottom view, and I want this along the plane here. And 3 is the side view. For right perspective, we have the front and then the top. And it tells you right here which view you're in. Okay, now we can zoom in here, and if we go into edit mode, now we can change the typing of our text. Alright, now that we've got our text here, you will see that by pressing the object data with the F on it, this is your text modifier. You can select to center this, which I prefer to do. You can also justify your text if you're doing a whole paragraph or flush your text. I'm not sure what flush text does. Okay, you can also modify the fonts that it uses, but you will need to know which directory your fonts are located in. And this depends on which operating system you're using, be it Mac OS X, Windows, or Linux. So I'm happy with the fonts the way it is, but by selecting this folder, you can nav navigate uh, to the text that you want to use or the font that you want to use. Okay, now, in uh, having a look here at our text, you will notice there are you know, it is paper thin, if that. So we want this to have a nice uh, bit of depth that we can play with. To do this, we will press on Extrude here. Double clicking on it lets you put in a numerical value or you can press the left and right arrows. I'm just going to put in .2 as a value and now you will see we have text that has a little bit of depth to it. Now let's go into object mode because in order to be able to take our text and really be able to have any kind of fun with it, we need to convert it into a mesh. To convert the text into a mesh, make sure that it is selected. You know that it is selected when there is orange outside of your object here. And then you press Alt and C on your keyboard. Now you're going to get some choices. You can uh, you can uh, convert this to a mesh using curves or the second selection convert this to a mesh which has uh, vertices, faces, and edges. I, this is the one that I want. Now when we go into edit mode you will see here that this is what we have. We have faces let me uh, change the mode here and press A. Alright, we then have 
vertices, we have edges, and we have faces. And you'll notice that the faces are broken up a little bit here. Let me go ahead and navigate so you can see what I mean. You know, there are all these little faces here that we can select. Now, I personally like, uh, I like the vertex selection myself. Let me zoom out here. Let me center this a little bit better. And then we're going to go ahead and change our view to a side view or the front perspective view. And then at this point, I'm going to show you another really cool selection tool, which is the box. By pressing B on your keyboard here, move your cursor to where you want it, press B. Now you have a box, so when you use the left mouse click button, you can draw a box, and it will select vertices. There is one drawback, though. It didn't select all of the vertices. It could only select vertices that it could physically see. To correct this problem, you have this little modifier here, which turns it transparent. And as you can see, now we can see the vertices that are underneath. So then going back into this view and pressing the B key again, and then drag, now we have all of our top vertices selected. And now we can have some fun with this if we want to. I can take the Z arrow here, which is blue, and I can stretch it up and make the text a little bit thicker if I want. I can even use the X arrow, which is in red, and move it around if I want to. And, th and then I can also do the same thing with the Y arrow. And then, of course, I've been doing Control-Z to undo. There's also some other fun things we can have with this. We have a modifier here, which will allow me to rotate it. I could even go as far as selecting text individually to have fun with this. Matter of fact, why don't we twist it around this way a little bit. I want to see how this looks when we render it out. Let me zoom out here. And just press render to render the image. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Let me press escape here and we'll go back in here. Now, of course, this is blocky gray, you know. We really don't care for that, but the thing is, what we can do here is I can go back into object mode on this. I've already done enough meddling with the text, but now we can uh, select a color for it. We can even define the specular color. I always like a darker specular color. This gives you a general idea of what you're getting as well. We can even make a determination as to whether or not we want this to um, show light. And by uh, modifying the emitter here, you will see that our uh, sphere preview is emitting light. And also, if you wanted to, you could use different models to see how this effect is going to look. I usually just stick with the sphere. We can even add transparency to this, and by do so doing, there, we drag it down a little bit. You will see that our model here 
it has a little bit of transparency. So let's go ahead and do a render and see what we get. Obviously, this takes a long time to render on a single core processor, but I am liking what I am seeing. I do see that there is some transparency in this, so very nice indeed. Whoops, wrong key. All right, so, um, but all in all, I'm loving Blender. Uh, there's so much I have yet to learn in this, but uh, given time, who knows, I'll be able to throw up some tutorials I know. Uh, I know I want to have a nice uh, 3D title animation to make for my uh, Cup of Linux show, and uh, I have decided that I'm going to do that this time using just free and open source software, and just to see what kind of creativity will come out of here. If you have any comments, put them in the space below. I have the rest of the day off today, so I'm going to take some time to try and fill at least one or two requests of yours, and I'll pull them off of my request section. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.